In this episode, welcome to Mars. The human species is an integral part of the ecosystem on Earth and relies on energy derived from plants. As we strive to colonize Mars, replicating this interdependence will pose a significant challenge. Growing plants will be crucial to our survival in the harsh and inhospitable environment of the Red Planet, characterized by residual atmosphere, sandstorms, and infertile soils. To survive, we will need to cultivate various plant species, which will require advanced technology and logistics. Different fruits and vegetables provide different nutritional values, hence the importance of a diversified diet is crucial for astronauts' health. In Occupy Mars, we aim to realistically simulate the process of growing plants from seed to harvest. In today's episode, we will explore the steps involved in the process, from planting seeds to obtaining food from crops. We will also discover the methods for obtaining fertilizer and the proper care needed for our plants. Finally, we will visit the Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation Base to see how they grow plants during their simulated missions to Mars. In Occupy Mars the game, growing plants is an essential part of the game. To plant seeds, players will need to use a seed tool, a special device that evenly distributes each seed into the proper slot in the soil. At the start of the game, Players can cultivate plants in small hydroponic installations located in their habitat or workshop. As they progress, they will have the opportunity to unlock special greenhouses and domes, which will provide the space to grow a wide variety of plants on a larger scale. Plants progress through several stages of growth, each requiring a different device. For example, potatoes are ready to be harvested after stage 2 while apple trees require all four stages. Planting seeds directly to stages higher than one is also possible, but will slow down their growth significantly. The four main stages of plant growth in the game are the incubator, the hydroponic shelf, fields, and domes. At each stage, players must ensure proper care of the plants, including providing the right temperature, light, water, soil, and nitrogen levels. To ensure the right temperature, every building intended for growing plants must be connected to electricity and the proper temperature for each plant must be provided. Every plant needs solar energy or its substitute for photosynthesis. Greenhouses require constant supply of electricity to power the LEDs which emit an efficient photosynthetically active radiation range in the electromagnetic spectrum required by plants. Water is the necessary foundation of every life form. Plants will wither in case of frequent water shortages, but they can also rot from excess water, so make sure to always set the correct values. To produce soil, you can process Martian rocks, regolith full of silicon, in the composter. Such soil can later be used in fields and domes. Nitrogen is an additional resource which increases the growth rate of plants in the soil. It's obtained from organic waste, such as withered plants or waste from toilets, which can be converted into fertilizer using a composter machine. The right pressure is also important for plants to survive. That's why closed and pressurized interior is required to start the vegetation process. Plants convert carbon dioxide to oxygen, so the more plants you will have inside your base, the less CO2 scrubbers and external O2 supply you will need. Some plants, like the oxygen tree, are particularly good at producing oxygen in large amounts, but they take some time and patience to grow. Plants can be transplanted between stages manually or using a plant crate tool. With proper care, plants will eventually produce fruit, which can then be processed into more nutritious dishes with the use of a food processing unit. To prevent spoilage, it's best to store the produce in a refrigerator. You can also achieve increased fruit production by genetic modification. Choose the most genetically developed strain to achieve faster growth and better nutritional value.
I'm Officer Co. Hillary, and uh, I was in charge of growing lettuce on our mission. And uh, this is the lettuce grow system. Uh, this is what we were using to test uh, basically growing organic plants while we were on our mission for the last two weeks. Um, so this system, uh, it uses about five gallons of water each time you do a grow. You need to add nutrients like calcium and nitrogen. Uh, this is what you put into the water when you first start growing. And then uh, the other important thing besides nutrients when you start growing these plants is to make sure the pH in the water is set to a specific number. So for this particular lettuce grow system and for most growing plants and hydroponics, uh, you need a number between uh, 5.5 and 6. So as you can see, I just checked the pH and uh, this is by adding hydrogen. And uh, we're at about between 5.0 and 5.5, which is fine. Now, if the pH is too high, um, there's pH down that we can add to the water that would actually decrease it. So it's not as, uh, as much of a problem if it's a little low. Um, and then what we do is periodically, after we've set all the water and planted our seedlings, um, it's really good to check the nutrients and the pH uh, at least once a week. So that's what we've been doing. Um, and in terms of the daily maintenance, there's really not much you need to do besides checking the, the pH once a week. Um, there's these really cool timers that come with this system. So one of them uh, actually regulates uh, the lights. One of them regulates the watering. So for lights, what we've done is uh, 14 hours on and 10 hours off. So these timers actually control that. And then for the watering, um, as you can see by these little uh, nodes that are on the positive, so it's uh, every hour, uh, 15 minutes of watering. So in terms of what that means when I say watering, um, there is a system of tubes that run water all the way from the top through each of these holes. So the water is actually spread from the bottom of the system up to these individual plants. So if you were right here uh, and you touch these soils like I'm doing right now, it's actually really moist and it never dries out. So these are meant to be continuously moist, which is why um, 15 minutes every hour on the hour, you would have water circulating through the soil, which I consider to be a pretty decent system. These were uh, very little seedlings when we first got them. And as you can see, just after two weeks, um, they're almost fully fledged lettuces. Uh, so I think we did a pretty good job. Um, and in terms of, you know, the uh, experiments we were doing specifically, this is for having a habitat on a Martian environment. I would say, in, you know, ease of use, excellent, 10 out of 10. Uh, the only thing that I would consider is, you know, we lost power through this mission and so, you know, we had to move this thing under the window and hope for the best and use a spray bottle, which, you know, I think is appropriate and fine. Um, but, uh, you know, when you're in a Martian environment, things like water or other natural resources are very scarce. So um, I'm a little concerned about using five gallons of water up front just to keep these, you know, little lettuces watered. But besides that, I consider it to be a pretty successful hydroponic system. In the next episode of Tight Beam from Mars, we'll discuss energy production and strategies for surviving on the red planet during blackouts and other hazardous events.